So you can actually see that effect parameter is controlling the background colour of that particular fader. got completely interactive performance with MIDI and video. So, um, it's a very, very simple program to operate. Um, uh, very intuitive. Um, as I say, the emphasis is on hands-on control. The manual was only about four pages long. Um, so it's very quick and easy to learn. And it's all, it's all down to building up the skills to actually do the, do the presentation. There's no real hidden tricks. There's no hidden menus or anything. Um, that's, that's the beauty of the motion dive. You can actually pick it up pretty quickly and actually start getting very creative with it and building up your own sort of styles with it. So, it's a bit cool. Yeah? Is there any questions at all? Yeah, um, would it work with the SD404 or is it the you, you can actually, if it's got V-Link, then you can actually access um, certain uh, video parameters with the 404, with 444 controlling effects. But you will receive note information, so you can actually trigger pads from the 444 and actually trigger video, the corresponding video effects. The beautiful thing is, when you go through the different banks, you're able to, uh, it's the same MIDI note number through all the banks, so you can actually get creative by just switching banks. Uh, so, you know, if you've got different themes on different banks, uh, you can actually build a performance just by clicking on the different banks and it brings up, and the, the MIDI notes that you've used in your sequence or uh, what you, you're performing with, uh, the corresponding notes will stay the same, so you, you know exactly what you're presenting um, because it's the same note number for every bank. So it makes it a very, very creative feature. Is there anything else? So what files does it play? Is it just what sort of files does it play? Files? Or? Yeah, anything that plays in QuickTime will play on Motion Dive. It uses QuickTime video engine. Cool. Yeah. Mm. And how much does it retail for? So it's a retail about a grand, isn't it? Just over a grand. Um, it's so that for the that's for the software and the, and the controller. Um, PC or Mac. Um, so all you need is a laptop with a, and and one of these, and you, you've actually got a you've got yourself a, a VJ uh, system yeah. happening. So the next unit's a dedicated sampler. Yeah, it's looking at 12 or something like that. Mm. That's, that's not a, that's not a yeah, but see, that's 5.5. Five, five. That's, I'm going to go another presentation on the 5.5 five, five, five alone. It's a work, this is actually working as an audio interface as well. So basically all the sounds are going through there. So any DJ that's looking for a, an audio interface and something that's got a bit hands-on, this is perfect. Because um, if, you're, if, you're, if you want to make up your own loop library, you can actually... Um, use your software and instruments to actually build up your loops. Record it on there, there's a, there's a great capturing feature, so capturing audio, sign the pads, start experimenting, hands-on, playing with it, and because it's got USB, you just actually transfer your library back onto your computer if you like using your software like Ableton, then you can actually start building up your instruments that way. So 555 it works in two ways really well. So to download the music onto the 555, mm -hmm. um, yeah, does it come with programs with that, or uh, does it come with the show up as a, um, as a programming computer? Like no, that, that's just because it's, it's, it's an audio interface. Yeah. So any program you want to use, uh, it's an ACO driver. Just basically, 555 is your audio driver. Yeah. So you just pump your audio out and just um, through here, and then capture what whatever phrases that you want and build up the library. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's simple. But it's more fun than it. I bet, I mean, those little sounds, I was just playing around with Reactor this morning for about 10 minutes. And just whatever, pick them on fancy, I could hit the record button here and capture it. What's the other way really well though? If you record it somewhere off the machine, either via the USB or your turntables, 
I've worked over. Um, once it's been put on key, put that compact flash back into your PC and export it as right mm -hmm. So it works two way straight. Yeah. Really cool. Really nice call. Cool. Very cool. Any other questions? I mean, change it like if you just had two uh, film clips. Yeah. I mean, you can change the tempo. Oh uh, yes, you can. Uh, there are SD controls for the for the video clips. Um, we'll get it happening. Uh, well, it does beat mapping all, all, automatically. Okay, there's the controls here. There's BPM sync. So uh, if I bring back, let's find something that's actually doing something interesting. Uh, there's a little little rigid face here, and uh, something like this. Put that on there. Now I just bring back a. Uh, Audio file, I think like that one. I go to BPM sync and I'll, well, hold on, I'll take the file first. And Which that's just about it. Yeah, that's it. Well, anyway, uh, what you can do, you can actually control the speed with it, and you can actually BPM sync. What happens is, is when you go to BPM sync, it takes it as a four bar, the, the, the video is a four bar measure and just squeezes it. So as long as the video don't go, the video clip doesn't go over um, uh, 20 seconds, you can actually, it will compress the video or expand it to actually go by, as a four bar measure. Oh, I see, you can only play 20 second video clip. Uh, well, it, when you, if you want to BPM sync it, you can play it as long as you want, otherwise. If you want to use BPM sync, it just puts a big drain on, on the hard drive uh, and doesn't work effectively. Yeah, so yeah. that's the reason why they've done, they've done that particular feature. But you can actually control the speed of the video as well. You can actually um, uh, use, um, use the software. That's, um, it's got this, this, this controls here, BPM sync. You can actually control um, the speed and increments there. You, or you can actually run, um, do uh, motion, like going forwards and backwards, backwards and forwards, etc., etc. So yes, you can do all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, the way they merge from clip to clip mm -hmm. is there different. Uh, uh, like, what are, what are the multiple ways of being able to do that? Like uh, going from A to B. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. You can do auto crossfade. Yeah. Or you can actually use the actual crossfader itself. There's three different speeds you can assign to it. Also, with a tap. <coughs> You can actually, um, while the video is running, uh, you can actually um, tap on different locations as well. Um, Quick capacity, it's not swiping or anything like that, I mean, like, yeah, like, it's some uh, functions what? that I'm saying, like, like, I know, like, you know, turning into a box and taking yeah. like, all oh. the things. Like, yeah. But it does uh, with the uh, tools for uh, layering. You can um, be more creative in the crossfading. There's a lot. There's a, a variety. There's about 24 different layering effects, which actually uh, take the video content of either channel. Whether it's an, and, and just use a, a parameter, whether they use the brightest feature of one to actually crossfade with another. So there's lots of creative crossfade uh, features you can actually use with this particular product. And, um, and if you, when you register your project with um, Digital Stage, who are the, the Japanese software creators of this product, product uh, they do offer you uh, the, um, uh, more uh, video effects to download and add, add to your library. And they're constantly creating new ones which you can actually download. Once you register, there are, from time to time they'll create new effects and um, you can download those and use those as well. Cool. And you go.